they'll get to the corner and go, what the f are you doing, bro? And next minute he's just gone, like, he's, he's let the whole kick go on us, you know? My old man dived in front of me, got one in the head, head first into the ground, he had a massive hole in his house. I said, oh, he's finished, he's dead. He, that's why I laugh at all these rappers, they talk, they do all this big gangster game, but bro, if you really live that life, you're not going to sit there and laugh at that. Like, he's like, bro, right. you up mentally, you know? Like it says it's your life. 12 years for a word, a dog, which is a loyal animal. I lost 12 years of my life not to be a, called a dog brother, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. worth it, right? Young soldier of God. Steady march. Yo, it's your boy Dave here, and this is the Fallon Show. Hope all is going well out there. God bless you all. Um, how about you introduce yourself, brother, and where you're from? Uh, it's me, Josh Smart. They call me Smarty. I'm from Glebe in the city, Sydney City. And yeah. Nice, brother. Josh from Glebe, man. Good to have you on the show, bro. How's your day going? Uh, it's all right, brother. <laughs> Could be better. Are you still getting into the boxing stuff and all of that, bro? Yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm still getting into boxing and stuff. It's just um, jail just keeps putting me off the me off the path you know yeah yeah brother no nah, i heard you there my bro so you know definitely praying for you from this end brother um yeah so josh is jumping on the show today he's going to share a bit about his story and what's led him to where he's at now in life um like he just said he's from sydney um he has made headlines in the past um he has been through a little bit here he has been shot um which you know sort of came all over on the news here he's done a bit of time there as well um, so yeah, now we're just going to touch on a few things, man, and just have a little yarn. But, um, I mean, where are you from originally, brother? Um, well, my family's from Cara, like up in uh, the, the bush there. But yeah, I, I grew up in Glebe my whole life. I was born in Glebe. Yeah, so just an original Glebe boy, you know. What's it like out there, my bro, for, for my New Zealand viewers and that? Bro, the Glebe, Glebe, it's good now, but back in the day, it was one of probably the baddest areas in Sydney. Redfern, Waterloo, you know, it's close there. Yeah, it's pretty hard when I was younger growing up there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably made me who I am today. Probably made me the person I am today, you know. So what sort of led you down that path, bro, of, of you know, crime and, and jail and those sorts of things? Um, my family, bro, like my parents and my dad, like my whole family is just pretty much criminals, you know. So from the start, I really didn't have much of a choice. So I got brought into this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, peeps, yeah, like it was pretty hard. My dad's a criminal, my mum's a criminal. They never worked. Like, visit my dad in Goulburn when I was a kid. My dad's getting shot a few times. He shot someone, you know, like, yeah. Well, how was it for you? How was it for you, man, going into Goulburn and that to visit your dad? I was only a baby. I was pretty scared, eh? It's pretty scared. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when we were first contacts with the police and, and all of that sort of stuff, um, well, as a kid, I just remember him raiding the house all the time. My dad always punching like the front. So, yeah, and I, when I was younger, the police pulled me over when I was a kid. And I go, oh, I said to him, like, listen, I'm not being charged. I don't talk to police when I was a kid, like a little baby. I said to him, I don't do interviews. And, yeah, I just cut him off straight there. Yeah. So you're pretty much already schooled to the game in that? Yeah, bro. Fucking, it's a lot like, I've lost nearly 12 years of my life over a word, a dog, you know what I mean? Like, in my family, you just... You, like you, you get done for something, you just got to cop it. Yeah. Just, there's, no, there's no talking to police or none of that. It's like, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty harsh world, that world. You know, that's for sure. Um, well, I mean, from there, brother, so when did you first in, into the prison system? Um, when I was uh, 17, my uncle stabbed my old man and I uh, wrapped the club lock around his head to stop him. My uncle went, we didn't go to police. My dad didn't go to the hospital. He just done his wounds himself at home. But my uncle decided he wanted to sue me and uh, sued me 50 grand. And my first offence, I got four years of two on the bottom, straight to jail. Oh, yeah. So what sort of prisons did you go to, man? And how was that experience for you? Um, I went to Young Offenders, which was pretty scary, you know, like being uh, white, you're going into Young Offenders with all the Islander boys and all the Aboriginal boys just looking at you through the fence. Like 20 Aussie blokes would bail a week there, you know. So it was, it was pretty scary. Like you had like Henry Vos was there, one of the he was the, the like the adult nuke there. And yeah, it used to be very scary seeing him. Like no one could give him eye contact, not even the Islander boys. He'd walk up, bang, slap one of them, you know? What are you staring at? Like Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> tough experience, huh? Yeah, right. But he's a good bloke, you know, Henry. Like he's a very good bloke. And it's the only person I've ever seen in the jail system walk himself to Segro. After bashing the screws. Well, I mean, so then how was it for you being released in that, bro? What, what, what sort of was the plan from there? 
I mean, were drugs and that ever in the picture when you were young, bro, or anything I mean, like I that? Going, I was going to Beijing Olympics for boxing, you know. I played for the Roosters uh, under 20s, and I, I left it for boxing. And I was I was undefeated as an amateur. And yeah, I was never took drugs, and but that's that's what got me to where, like, where I am today. Like the first time in jail, like four of the two. It's pretty long for the first time. No warnings, no caution straight to jail, you know. Yeah, yeah, that is most definitely. Um, oh, okay, so sporting was a big part as well. So, what, so you were playing for the Roosters, the under twenties? Yeah, but I was playing for the under twenties, and I left the contract for boxing. I was training with Johnny Lewis. He's one of the good trainers here. And yeah, how was that for you, man? Boxing and uh, you know being undefeated oh, and that. Man. It was man like I, like I was in Glebe. I was having a punch on at the front of the pub with three blokes. I was fighting three guys, and this trainer comes out and he goes, "Oh, man, instead of fighting on the street, come to the gym," you know. And three months later, I was in the ring. Through that, and that was uh, um, how was it? How did your first fight go? Yeah, I won. I won in the first round, I knocked the guy out. Far yeah. out. Oh, and then he I ended up, hey, with... it's like a drug. Boxing's like a it's like my medication. Like when I'm doing that, I'm on top of the world. I feel so good, yeah, yeah. Well, so then how long were you out for that first time after getting out? Did you go back to boxing in that, or yeah, no, I didn't go back to boxing. Um. I was there for 10 months, bro, and then, I, yeah, the shooting happened. I was shot at the front of my house. Well, can you yeah. go into that at all, bro, how that was? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was pretty bad, bro. I walk out my house, and I'm with my old man, you know, and then they'll get to the corner, and I go, what the f*** are you doing, bro? Next minute, he's just gone like this. He's let the whole clip go on us, you know. My old man dived in front of me, well, got one in the head. He's got a bullet lodged in his brain. He got shot in the ass, you know. So I was running down the street, screaming, ah, oh, you f swearing this guy, and prick this and now I'm going to kill you because I was dirty because I had to run so I don't like running from anyone and I slipped out I looked up and I see my dad head first into the ground he had a massive hole in his head. I said oh he's finished like he's dead and my sister's out there screaming you know and like it's probably one of the things I'll never forget you know it's one of my dad's there like that that's when you oh, really know like, you know what I mean like that's when you know like but you know what if me and my dad always, my dad, no matter what, my dad would say, if anything happens to me, that's the part of the game. You're to be loyal to the game. You get killed or someone gets killed, don't be crying around. You're involved in this stuff. What do you expect, you know? But yeah, man, I'll never forget that day, man. Well, pa, he actually jumped in front of you, was it? Yeah, bro, he jumped in front of me, man. And I don't know how he survived, bro. He's been shot three times, this old bloke. <laughs> He's just so tough, you know? Far out. God's with them, brother. Must be for yeah. a reason. Yeah. Well, so then what happened from there, bro? So did you end up back in jail after that, was it? I got locked up that night. Um, I got refused bail. I got five years for not telling the police who shot me. Five years. So because he didn't tell the police what happened, they gave yeah. you five years for that? Yeah, I got two years for concealing a serious file of offence. I got three years for sending a threatening text message to the guy. And this is oh, like, right. I, I couldn't get bail. I couldn't get nothing. I, I got locked up that morning. Not even time to heal. I walk out. Next time I have the media. I just give him the finger. I didn't realize what I was doing. You know? I was smiling. They go, look at this guy. He's just been killed. He's laughing about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that is what it is. Eh, bro? You know, when you get in the media's approach and you got to put on that front, don't you? You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, that's just how it is. Eh? Um, well, then, well, so, how, well, I mean, what was your, well, how was it for you in jail, man? Like not knowing what's really going on with your dad and, and things like that. It was hard, bro. Like all I did was, was in the endless. I was hoping this. I didn't care if I die. I still leave my mum about my dad. It was hard. I just didn't want to wake up, you know. But when I found out he was fine, I was so happy. Yeah. yeah. Well, so how was your time in jail from there, my bro? Um, I, I, I used to, yeah. Like everyone looked at me like a little pretty boy and stuff. And then I wanted to be like a sick kind. I used to go around punching on and just trying to. Yeah, you know, when you're young, you know, you want to be the baddest person in there. So I was punching on. I actually got um when I was in the meet the papers I had a little running with the someone put money on my head so they um I had one on one with one of the main guys and I, I got the guy so when I walked out saw three of them got me and smashed my head in with the sandwich maker the breville yeah oh, wow. <laughs> taken out in a stretcher you know well yeah. how was that for you my bro bro the funniest thing was the ambulance driver the night I got shot. Who took me into the hospital? She just moved because of what she seen that night to out west. She was the ambulance person, bro, taking me to the hospital. No, we does that up. Far out, <laughs> buzzy. Yeah. yeah, they tried. They tried to put me in um 
duty of care, I said, listen, you packed me to the bone yard. I said, the first thing I do is stab someone in the yard. And sort of like I say, left me in uh, the hospital. I went back to Bathurst. Guess who I see in the holding cells on the way back to Bathurst? The, the guy, the guy who breveled me, you know. And he comes up trying, oh, I fussed in him or something, trying to shake my hands. Who's that? It's, it's on again. Got him in the, the cells, you know. Yeah. That's what you got to do, but you know, you got to be first in best dressed. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is what it is in prison, isn't it? It is what it is in there. I mean, I've also, so how, how did the rest of your time go, man? Was it sort of similar yeah. stuff? Or? Right, yeah, like, far out, man. I had boys coming up to me, like, um, just trying to be like, oh, you dropped some I said, yeah, oh, we're having a crack. So just because they had the papers and the guy who shot me, like, his mates. So I was like, I just trained up that heart, so I was expecting it. So I was just sending them back down to him, you know, I was just sorting them out and sending them back to the guy, like, these your boys, you know. But, yeah, other than that, it was pretty good, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, did you keep up your training in there and all that with the boxing and yeah, whatnot? Bro. Yeah, you get toilet uh, paper with the socks, you know, you do the pads. I was training a few boys, I got so fit in there, bro. I, I said to myself, if the world ends, I'm going to get so fit and train so hard. If the world ends, I'm still going to be alive. So <laughs> <I'm a weapon. laughs> yeah. Well, so I well, so how was it for, for you when you got released, my bro? And after that, after that, where? Um, it was good, bro. It was good. Like, I met this um, Maori girl from New Zealand. I got with her, and um, she's the best guy I've ever been, bro. Like, she's, I was I've been back in the boxing. I had uh, Mark Burris as my sponsor. And I was training, I was in the media and papers, and I was like doing Instagram stuff. And yeah, bro, she got pregnant and she uh, faked the pregnancy to me, eh? No. Me yeah, bro. I've got, we've got her name still tattooed here. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, sorry to hear, brother. Yeah, like all the way to delivery day too, bro. That's how I like started getting on drugs and that's like because I thought I was having a son, you know. Oh. And she had a stomach. I had ultrasounds from Google and and like yeah, this girl would get up early to go to the ultrasound appointments and um, so I couldn't go. And then yeah, I'm putting up photos of someone else's kid from Google on, on my Facebook. I get to delivery day. I'm sitting at the hospital out there for six hours waiting in there to go see my son. And they call me in, they can't tell me what happened. She goes, oh, his, uh, his son's heart stopped. He's, he's dead. My missus said he's crying. My dad's crying. And never seen my dad cry, you know, so I broke my heart. And I'm nearly punching on with the security because I wanted to see my son. Like, he's been born. I want to put some clothes on him, throwing him away like he's nothing, you know. And, yeah, that's that's how I started getting on drugs. It mentally fucked me. When you think you lost your own blood, your kid, it's the worst pain you ever feel in your life. Oh, brother, that's heartbreaking, my bro. So sorry to hear yeah. about that, man. So well, how how far long ago was that, my bro? Uh, 2015. 2015. Yeah, it was a while ago, but it still, still feels like it was yesterday. Oh, yeah, my bro. Yeah, no, 100%, brother. But I mean, so, I mean, what, what's, what's sort of your plans at the moment, my brother? You know, obviously, you've gone through um, a lot, my man, you know. So, I mean, what are the plans for you, my brother? Um, right, so, like, I'm, I'm 32 now. I'm getting I'm, I'm old man now, like, <laughs> I've got no savings, I've got no kids, I've got like all this jail time has just fucked me up. It's just hard, bro. Like, it's, I feel like boxing, I'm a bit old for boxing now, too. I'd love to have a few more fights. But, like, because it's so hard to get a fight, I stopped boxing because I couldn't get any fights, bro. Like, I had no one that wanted to fight me. I couldn't go to England, I couldn't go to America. But, like, if I was an NRL player, they would have signed me up straight away. You know, if, if, they would have got me in there. It's just, I threw my talent away, you know, it's one of my biggest regrets is that. Like not boxing and stuff. Well, I mean, bro, that's 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 all heartbreaking stuff, my bro. But I mean, that's why you know, to people watching, you know what I mean. To those youths out there, you know, stay that yeah. right track, isn't it, brother? You know bro, what I mean. This gang life, this 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 gangster life, this like it all mentally fucks you in the end. You know what I mean, bro? Like I'm stuffed. Up. I see friends in college, college, I see a psychologist, relationships, Australia. Like, when you've witnessed people getting murdered and you've done bad things to people, like that's why I laugh at all these rappers. They talk, they do all this big gangster game, but bro, if you really live that life, you're not going to sit there and laugh at that like he's like, bro, it fucks you up mentally, you know. It doesn't matter who you are, you can be the toughest man on the world, but mentally it stuffs you, bro. Stay in school, don't do drugs, get an education, man. I want to be a real estate agent or a lawyer. You know what I mean? Like I've been in every gang possible, Asian gangs, and graffiti gangs. My cousin's one of the big leaders of the bike. He's like, I've been in all that stuff. You know what? Doesn't it? It's shit, bro. Like it's, it's life. 12 years for a word, a dog, which is a loyal animal. I lost 12 years of my life not to be a, called a dog brother. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. worth it, bro. It's it, shit. It, 
It's not, it's not worth it, is it, brother? I mean, I know exactly what you mean, but I mean, so many guys I know in prison right now sitting in there doing double digits because of that word, because they didn't want to be a dog. And the guy that did dog them is out living his life. You yeah. know what I mean, mate? Yeah. Not, no one cares. No one does. Everyone forgets, mate. You know what I mean, yeah. brother? Like, if, uh, if I give someone up, my fan would probably knock me. I'd get disowned. I wouldn't be able to walk in my area. The guy gives me up, he's walking around fine, shaking his hand, you're sweet, bro, you know, like, it's all good. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's how, that's how, something I stress, man. That's why I just don't get involved in that life at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you think that your boys, you know, if someone rats on you and your boys are going to do anything about it, think again, no. man. You know what I mean? Think yeah, again, I mate. Me, no mates. I call my friends associates. I have no mates because I don't trust anyone. And a mate to me is someone who's going to back me up. Someone runs me down behind my back, I expect my mate to say something or hit him. And then I'll sit there and join in on it, you know. And a lot of boys out here, there's no loyalty. All my main boys are in jail. And it's like, I just kick back one out. That's what I do. I don't trust anyone. Like, I got my, my nigga Murchie, which is on your show. It's my best mate, Keanu. He's yeah. one of my mates, you know. Oh, yeah. He's a soldier, that guy, bro. Far out. We yeah, did we used to like each other. Yeah, we didn't like each other. We didn't like each other when we were younger. <laughs> but when he was in jail, bro, he's kind of, he's kind of solid, bro. Every yard, he's walking in the yard next minute. Blah, blah, blah. And I could follow up, Richie. Well, yeah, I, I mean... mean I mean, look, brother, you know, was there anything else that you wanted to share out there, brother? To anything else you wanted to put out there for everyone, my bro? Um, man, like, yeah, it's just I want to I do things for, like, youth on the street. I want to go and look after kids on the streets, like, disadvantaged kids like me. Like, they tell me I've got to do a two-year uni course, but at the end of the day, what's I've been grew up in these streets. I've been reveled, stabbed, shot, glass, macheted. Like, the red-nosed people only took my arm off the leg. Yeah, I've been through more than anyone and like yeah i want to just look after kids on the streets so i try to get in there and do this like a social worker thing try to help kids out yeah most definitely brother yeah but yeah bro, i'm gonna get back i'm gonna get into rapping with merchie so i'm gonna see how that goes as well so <laughs> yeah no that'll be dope my bro that'll be dope yeah, no, I mean, bro, you know, at the end of the day, you do have value, brother, you know what I mean? I can see it in you, brother, you know, you could kill it out there on those streets, bro, doing the righty and, um, you know, trying to pull a few lads up and, you yeah. know, because like you said, bro, you've been through a lot, mate, you know, that's a lot to go through, bro. You know what, there's always someone out there harder than us, bro, like, I've had a good life because there's people in other countries that have got nothing, you know, so, yeah, a day up here is better than a day down there, you know? Yeah. The end of the day, Exactly right, brother. Well, look, man, yeah. we're coming to the end here, my bro. You know, so, um, brother, I appreciate your time for jumping on. I know that this message is going to, a lot of people will feel your message, brother, because it's it's a tough life, bro. You know what I mean? It's a hard life, mate, and it's very hard to get out of. Um, only by the grace of God, brother, I made it out of there and I've, I've been, a, have had this blessing of being able to share brothers and sisters' stories, mate, and uh, put it out there to the world. So, um, bro, I'll leave your, um, if people want to get a hold of you, bro, I'll leave your, um, you know, if you want, I can leave your Instagram in the description, bro, if people want to reach out and things like that. But, um, brother, I mean, God bless, man, and and, and have a good rest of the day. You too, brother. Much love, eh? Much love, brother. On your cars. I love you, bro. Take care.